In this video, we're going to be talking about which strike to pick. You can definitely pick the wrong strike in some circumstances. Let's get into the video. Now, when it comes to picking your strike, you got to keep a few things in mind. The first one being, what's your trade plan? The scalp, a day trade, a swing, or you got like multiple months on the position. You're going in the money like a leap, like Nancy Pelosi. Or you're doing like some kind of spread, like a debit spread or a credit spread. Now, if you're scalping, and this also kind of uh, depends on which day you're trading. For example, if you're trading a Friday expiration, and you go hundred dollars out the money, then you're basically just giving money to the market makers because there's really no way that this price will move hundred dollars in a single day, or it's fairly unlikely. If you do, you might have just hit the lottery. Now, if you're scalping, you definitely want to be trading at the money or the next strike out of the money. Now, for example, if you're trading Tesla, it's trading around eight hundred dollars right now. Instead of getting the Tesla, you know, 700 puts, you should try to get the 795 puts, the 790s. That's if your buying power allows it. If you have a smaller account, you might want to stick to trading, you know, smaller stocks or equities like SPY, QQQ, or Apple. You can actually get at the money um, options as opposed to, you know, going super far at the money on stocks like Tesla. And the next one's going to be a day trade, you know, like an hour or longer. If you're thinking about day trading a stock, you think that you're planning to hold it for like the whole trading day, then it makes sense to go a little bit further out the money to let the stock work for you and grind higher. You know, going back to the Tesla example, if you think Tesla has like a 40 point range for the day and you plan to hold it the entire day, that's what your trade plan says, then yeah, it makes sense to go like the 750 calls or the 850 calls, my bad, or like the 750 puts because you have more time on the contract, you're playing for more volatility. Your position will require less buying power and you're hopefully going for a bigger percentage gain in your position rather than scalping for 10, 15, 20% gains. You might be trying to get like a 50% gain, 100% gain if you go further. And your plan is a day trade as opposed to a scalp. If your plan is to swing a position, you see a really good opportunity and you're like three, four, five, six months on the contract, then it makes sense to go a bit further out the money to let the position work for you. Or the contracts will be a bit more expensive. It doesn't really make much sense to go at the money on a position that's four months out spend less money on the option contract and also get a potential bigger gain as the contract hopefully goes up in value over time. Fourth one is a leap like Nancy Pelosi and her husband. I, I do these quite frequently or I used to in the past. If your plan is to hold a stock, you really like this, you really like Nvidia for um, you know some unknown reason. You want to go deep in the money. Nvidia is trading at like 180 right now. Let's say you get like a 120 strike that expires in you know, one, two years. You're paying about $10,000 but the contract is gonna move like 100 shares. Instead of paying 18,000 for position, you're paying almost $10,000. You're saving $8,000 in buying power. The position will move like 100 shares. And I really prefer this method of investing if the buying power allows it. And this kind of goes in the following point. You can also do spreads with these positions. Now, if your plan is to do like a debit spread, a credit spread, a calendar spread, this is a discussion for another video. There's lots of different things you can do with spreads. But for this kind of video, we're just focused on single legged options, you know, buying buying puts or buying calls. Now let's go into think or swim. I'll break down a few examples of why going further out the money might not make sense, why scalping out the money makes more sense. You know, I use Tesla example so much, but it's, it's such a great stock to trade. On the left hand side of the screen, we have Tesla on uh, July 21st. The right hand side of the screen is the Tesla in 790 calls. And this is my example for if you're scalping the position. So right here, you know, Tesla came up to 790, you know, tapped it, pulled back and shot right back up. Now if your plan was to scalp it on this like, I'll pull back right here. Contracts hit a low about seven dollars. So you say, let's. All right, I'm gonna scalp it for like a you know two point three point move. And Tesla makes a about like a twenty dollar move from here. Lows of seven seventy eight. From this point, it has a seven ninety four, about a fifteen point move. So you got contracts down here, eight dollars. You got five of them, about four grand in the position. And the contracts moved almost you know four or five dollars in the course of twenty minutes. Now let's look at it for example. If your plan was to scalp the trade. Let's say you got like the like the 850 calls on the same expiration july 22nd so the same time those contracts you're scalping the 790 calls went from like eight dollars to 14 dollars <laughs> you entered the trade at the same exact time the 850 calls went from a low of eight or of 25 cents to about highs of two dollars so you made about a dollar 75 per contract substantially lower than if you're scalping the 790 calls I mean, yeah, you made about 1,000% return if you bought the low on the, on the 850s, but you only made $1.90 per contract. The 790s went from a low, um, they went up $9, you made about $4,500 as opposed to buying five contracts in the 850s and making, you know, $500. 
This is why you have to buy. If you have the buying power, you should definitely be buying at the money because the contracts move much faster. They have a higher delta and they're going to react accordingly to the price. This also depends on the day. For example, if you're trading Tesla on a Thursday, you buy like a 900 call and Tesla's trading at 800. If you get any kind of pullback on a Thursday on, on a one day, their expiration contract, the premiums when they get killed and you're going to lose pretty much all the money you put into the trade. If you get any kind of pullback on a Thursday or a Friday going into the trade. Now, in the case of a, a day trade, you plan to hold the trade the entire day. Same example, Thursday, July 21st. So you're like, all right, I'm going to go for a day trade. You know, the whole market hours, you know, 6.30 to 1 p.m. I'm um, Pacific Standard Time, by the way. Contracts hit a low of about, you know, 58 cents. Like, all right, I'll stop out below here. Uh, my next key low is at 8.30. So that's going to be my around my price target. The contracts went from, you know, let's say you get in like a decent entry, like a dollar. Stop loss is below 50 cents. You're risking 50 cents per contract. You get five, you're risking 250, but you're going to hold it then into your next price, into your profit target. These contracts went up $6 and they hit a high of $7 on the day. From entry of a dollar, you made $5 per contract. You only put $500 of equity into position. If you have a smaller account, this is what you should be doing. You should be looking to day trade your position rather than scalping big, big equities like Tesla. But as you build your account further and further and get more experience, you can start scalping Tesla out the money contracts and get those smaller percent gains, but the contracts will be much more volatile. You look at the movement you let you want on the contracts, even for smaller moves, but the contracts almost, you know, six X in the course of the trading day or the, you know, the at the money contracts only, you know, you got like a 30% gain, but the contracts, you know, move six, $7 in your favor. If you have a smaller account, you definitely want to be looking to day trade stocks, especially bigger equities like Tesla. If you have a larger account with much more equity and buying power, it makes a lot more sense to go for um, go for quick scalps in the position. All right, so now we're looking at Nvidia for like what I'd be looking for for a swing trade. And so if your plan is to swing a position, you know, multiple months on the contracts, you know, six, you know, four, five, six months on the position, it definitely makes sense to go further out of the money as opposed to you know trying to scalp a contract six months out because you can go for bigger percentage gains. You can put less equity in the position. It can save your buying power instead of having it all tied up in the swing position. You should be letting these swing positions work for you. But if you're comfortable swinging overnight, you should be comfortable holding for you know bigger and larger percent gains. Because you're not, you shouldn't be really scalping you know contracts six months out because they don't really move that fast. You can get the movement in the underlying right, but if the contract you know is a hundred dollars out the money on a stock like Nvidia. Your contracts might only go up fifty cents in value, as opposed to you know scalping it. You get like a ten dollar move in your favor, and you're like a couple of dollars, a couple of strikes out the money. The contracts will go up two, three, four dollars as opposed to you know fifty cents. And especially in a swing position, as the equity starts getting closer and closer to your strike price, the position is going to start you know moving faster and faster as it gets closer to expiration because the volume will start coming to that strike. But these are all things you have to think about um, when you're swinging a position. You have to be comfortable with the position you know going to zero overnight if that happens. You don't put too much risk on the table in a swing position. But you should also be trying to go for bigger and higher percent gains. So looking at Nvidia right here. So you thought Nvidia was you know pretty oversold at this point in time. So you saw Nancy bought down here around July 5th. No market manipulation here. And you want to wait for more confirmation. So Nvidia you know formed a low right here at 140. Made a, a high right here. Pulled back. Made a higher low. And that was your confirmation that they're trading on this higher low on this candle right here. I'm looking at the 200 strikes for November 18th. These contracts are about five dollars. And the swing low was down here about like four dollars. Give yourself some wiggle room. So like your stop loss would be like 375. So you're you're risking about like a dollar twenty-five from the position. It went on a run about 25% since you bought this contract. These contracts you're risking like a dollar twenty-five on the swing position. They went up over you know two hundred percent. And you only had five hundred dollars in equity in this position. As the underlying starts going higher and higher, if Nvidia happens, you know, get to like 195, 200, these contracts are gonna be, you know, worth roughly like maybe $32, $25. So your entry of about $500, you know, turned into 3,000, 3,500. And this is why it's important to, you know, I would at least take less equity or I'd spend less buying power in a swing position because anything can happen in this position overnight. You wanna risk too much. If you buy like a 150 call, and Nvidia just happens to gap down, you know, $25, God forbid, the next day, your premium on that contract would probably be in the toilet and you'd probably be sweating a little bit. But since you bought a strike a bit further out the money and you, you weren't risking too much, you bought one or two contracts, you're risking like a dollar twenty-five on the contract. Now you lost maybe, you know, two fifty on the trade as opposed to, you know, four or five, six hundred dollars because the stock decided to gap down. Left some bad, you know, news you can't really control. And the fourth one, 
like I said, I'll talk about spreads in a different video, but the fourth one is the recurring leaps. My definition is deep in the money contracts expire in over a year. So for example, on a stock like Nvidia, using the same example here, by January 19th, 2024, we think Nvidia is gonna go higher, hopefully. So down here, when Nvidia was, was trading around 140, we decided to buy a leap that expired in you know, 500 days. Like I said, the January 19th, 2024 strikes and the 100 calls paid a premium about $6,000. 6,500 if you bought the lows. Now, if you were to buy 100 NVIDIA shares at 140, it would have cost you about $14,000. You spent $6,700 in your position and you used half the equity. So instead of risking, you know, 14,000 in the position on NVIDIA, you're only risking 6,700 and that's if NVIDIA, you know, has a total collapse and hopefully you take advantage, you know, head your position with puts or something along those lines. So instead of risking, you know, 14,000 with 100 shares, you put in 6,000 and then NVIDIA hit 180, it would have been up about like four thousand dollars in your position whereas you spent six thousand the position on a leap 6500 contracts hit a high of 9600 so think about this <clears throat> you spent sixty five hundred dollars and you made a return about thirty five hundred dollars for the person who spent you know fourteen thousand on a hundred shares down here made a return about four thousand and you spent half the amount of equity equity required and this is why leaps are so beneficial and i really like utilizing them when i have the buying power you put less equity in the position. It's a leveraged position, so you get higher percent returns. You get more money out the out the trade. And you're not really risking that much. Instead of risking, you know, fourteen thousand dollars potentially if Nvidia hit zero, the worst that happened on this leap trade is you is you lost, you know, sixty five hundred. And that's if you held all the way down to zero. And Nvidia is really unlikely to hit zero, but instead of having fourteen thousand tied up, you have another eight thousand dollars in equity you can use to make money elsewhere. Hopefully, offset your loss on your uh, leap if, you, if Nvidia starts going down. There's lots of different things you can do, and these are kind of my guidelines when I'm picking a strike. You just gotta have a mindset. Oh, what's your trade plan? You're scalping or you're day trading it, you're swinging it, or do you just want to go deep in the money and hold your position like shares? And those are the four main things I look for. Now, this video helped you. If you learned anything, just drop a like and comment below. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.